When you build a boat, seeing it in the shop is one thing, but seeing it actually on the water was just mind blowing. Um, it was so cool to be able to see that and to know that you had built it and to sit in it and like actually know all the different parts of the boat and how much time went into building all of them, but also just being able to admire how beautiful it was. It was just incredible, like seeing something that you made do what it's meant to do um, was just like very rewarding. I don't think there was ever like a doubt that it would float, but seeing it float was something that was like very big. I feel like the most surprising part of building a boat was how like much work goes in before you even start touching the wood that goes on the boat. Immediately I realized how much work it would be once we did the workbench in like two weeks and hadn't started anything boat related. <laughs> like, we spent so much time on lofting and like creating the form for the boat. Lofting is essentially the process of transforming the numbers that we had for the size of the boat at different points along the boat into an actual mold that was physical that we could build the boat around. Yeah, so we had six molds on the boat and those were set up at equal distances along like what became bow to stern of the boat and they were sort of like cross sections of the boat um, taken going like top to bottom and then we built the planking right on top of those. The big turning point for me was definitely when we started putting planks on because that was actually visible and actually going to be the outside of the boat. The first couple of planks are very exciting because like you're starting to see a boat and the last plank is awesome because you're like there's the boat but those middle ones where it's just like the same thing over and over and you're looking at it and like you can't really see like the difference that you're making I think was like a pretty brutal section. In a lot of like the woodworking we were doing and, and the building of this boat, you kind of have your first idea and like, you know, you or for or idea of what something's going to look like. But before you can finish, it, it's never perfect. So what you need to do is you need to cut it out or you need to, you know, put it up and then see kind of what it looks like and where you went wrong or where a small mistake was made or kind of like a, a bad assumption was made and then fix it. So you put your plank onto the onto the boat. You kind of see where the curve looks funny. You see, um, you know, where where your plank is ending up on the on the ends of the boat. Like, is it too low? Is it coming up too high? And then you do small small adjustments uh, on the edges of that plank until it's looking perfect. <laughs> Planking is like all about you know like a fair curve, which is a very subjective matter that like comes with a lot of time. So I think like kind of adjusting to that way of thinking was hard where you're like, is this a fair curve? I don't know. Do you think it's fair? Yeah. Understanding what a fair line is was one of Steve's favorite um, questions during the class. Um, I would say a fair line is partially about aesthetics. It's about having a line that looks really smooth that doesn't appear to have any bumps. Um, but it's also probably about functionality for the boat. The boat moves more efficiently through the water with, le with less friction when it's nice and smooth. So a fair line is like a boat term for kind of like beauty. And the way that I came to understand fairness was that there's no flatness in a fair line, like that there's no straight, like linear part of a fair line. It's constantly like curving um, and like the transition between the curves is what makes it fair. What I thought was the most interesting about fair lines is you can feel a fair line. Um, and you need to feel a fair line almost before you see it because it can be sometimes hard when you're creating the planks to, it just takes more time to like set it all up and put the plank on the boat and then look and see what it 
is, but you can just, you know, while the plank is on the table, you can just run your hand along that and know but even before you set anything off or like put it on the boat, whether it's going to be like there or not or where the lumps are. The first kind of like tool you have when building the boat to create the fair line is your hand and, the, and like the second kind of judgment call is your eye. And the eye is really what you'll see when the boat's finished, but when as a creator, your like your hand is the first tool. My favorite tool was the plane. I loved the plane. Uh, the plane is just, it's the, the optimal tool, I think. Um, it's so fun. Um, I was really surprised when learning how to plane how much of it was about gaining this sense of of touch. Um, I remember the first time picking up the plane and Shep had had planed a piece of wood a little bit and made it purposely kind of bumpy and he said like can you feel those little bumps and I didn't really feel them and then I began planing and then as I like kept planing a little bit and then feeling a little bit over the course of maybe just 15 minutes, I began to get a sense and be able to actually feel those bumps. So I feel like I like gained this sensitivity in my finger to be able to feel where the bumps as I planed. Planing was my favorite activity. I just found it so calming. Planing was very much like you kind of like take this tool and you just have to like work with the wood and it's not like a, a tool of force. It's a tool of like motion. My favorite way to learn a tool is to be given it and be like, this is what it is, this is what it does. And now you go like have a 30 minute experience with it on your own, like when you're like learning about it. Um, so like an example of that was um, like a very like small detailed touch at the end of the boat. Um, like there were some screws in it and we, Shep wanted to make some wooden plugs for it. And like you use this like specialty drill bit and he like gave it to me. He's like, yeah, you know how to use this. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and um, kind of just like messed around with it and like made a few mistakes and like started figuring out what the tool sounded like and like the smell that the wood would make if I was like putting the drill in it for too long. And then like what a successful one turned out to be. So I really liked like the confidence that they had, like our teachers had in us to, to figure it out. With Chef, I think a huge thing that you know, he's had 25 years of experience working on this boat. And I think a big thing for him was trust. You know, when I took on on the kind of like planking activity with him, um, he was able to kind of like see that I was trustworthy in, in what I was doing and like safe. And then once you had his trust, he was just like, go do it. Like, <laughs> I, like I, you've got it. Like, um, and if you mess up, you mess up, it's okay. The nicest part for me was uh, those students who really got into it then and worked hard and did, you know, fairly big jobs, uh, you know, making nice parts of the boat. Really, really good. It turned out that the students for uh, craftsmanship and for uh, making it well, they carried me along when I was ready Oh God, let's just get, get through it and, you know, get to the next step. We don't have much time. I had students uh, saying, no, 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 wait, you said we need to do it this way. You know, this is, and, and, and so it was, you know. It was cool how open to questions he was as well, I'd say. He never like took a question as a dumb question, which I feel like if I were a professional boat builder, I would be like, why is this idiot asking me how to, how to like, screw this wood? I don't know. <laughs> What I realize is like if you make a mistake like really you can fix almost every mistake and like even if like a curve isn't absolutely perfect like the boat still floats like there's a, it's an interesting like kind of like I, I don't know at what point like you make a mistake the boat can't float but <laughs> I think I was a little bit skeptical at first of the how much of a role we could all feel like we had in creating this boat because of how large of a project it was. I liked the way they structured the class as breaking out into these sections where you only had four people working at a time. I think that um, that ended up working really well. I think we were all very good at taking turns. And I don't know at the beginning of the class, we like put an emphasis on 
like if someone had had experience beforehand we would make sure that like they wouldn't be just doing all of it we'd make sure everyone would get a try and I think we were very good at that and I think everyone was pretty aware of it as well the entire time which helped also just make everyone be friendly and friends with everyone I feel like just the vibes in the class all, all times were awesome there's something about working together as a group that just brought us all really close together and I got to know people in the class in a way that I hadn't been able to get to know people in other you know small classes that I've taken at Brown. It was like one of the few classes where I felt like I really like connected to the people in a way that was like beyond the class like where we would like hang out and not talk about you know just boat building. One of my favorite moments (laughs) was was maybe was that day when we were talking about the color of the boat. (laughs) It was a moment where I saw how comfortable and like cohesive we'd become as a, or never cohesive because we had a lot of ideas, but we were just like comfortable enough to like throw out ideas with each other to like, you know, disagree and to, it was a little bit rambunctious, but in like a wonderful way. And, you know, we would, we presented some realistic ideas and some people like presented funny ideas but it was all kind of this like how do we want this thing that we've all created together to feel and to look and yeah I I just felt it felt like a (laughs) dysfunctional family (laughs) I mean the boat launch is such it was such a special moment for our class because it was like mid-December it was cold there was snow on the ground but we still, like, we're so excited to be outside of the boat. I was concerned about the snow and slipping, and sliding into the water, and the boat, like, the weight of the boat pulling us down. And everybody else was like, oh, no, no problem, no problem, just do it. Launchings are great. The launching is a great part of it. I've had, you know, a lot in this being the 14th, you know, the 13th launch or so. I love the launches. I try to make a party out of them. This was a good one. We all like paired up with each other and we're taking pictures and had a few like rogue uh, boating moments where people like couldn't couldn't row against the tide, which was so funny. I got in it as the rower, which was a terrible decision because I don't really know how to row a boat. Uh, I know how to paddle a canoe, which is a different motion. And so I got in and I rode it upstream, or I rode it, yeah, I rode it upstream a tiny little bit, which was, I was okay, I was doing fine, and then I turned around and went downstream, and just got swept so quickly downstream that I couldn't turn around and row the boat back upstream. I had to be towed by a motorboat to bring the boat back upstream. Yeah, I was in the tow boat. It was, that was also fun, because it was kind of a reminder of, like, you did this incredible thing and it's awesome and there's still so many things you don't know about boats. You know, I thought it was quite a success as a rowboat. You know, for one, two, and three, you know, I really wanted to see that. Groups in it, individuals and groups in it. I thought it rowed beautifully, the little bit of rowing that I got to do. That moment was so rewarding and made it all feel really, really worth it. And getting to to row this boat and like really not just visualize how every line, like every line beneath me of the boat was moving through the water, but kind of like feel that and experience that was really, was just like powerful and amazing and special and something that I won't experience with another boat that I haven't built. It was really cool to see and feel something that you had built actually work the way we wanted it to and and that it had like a function like I think it was nice to build a boat and like use the boat to row especially because it's like such a tangible like artifact of like our learning and our class I think that was also huge like having kind of like this proof that like you spent a semester doing something was was very big This sounds like the cheesiest thing in the world, but like I did gain a lot of confidence in that class and that like I came into that class not being able to do a lot of things that I was able to do at the end of it. 
Um, and so, like, there's, like, a general way that I, like, kind of approach challenges now that I think has changed in that, like, there's always, like, this, like, part in the back of my mind now that's, like, you know what? Like, you built a boat. Like, you can probably do whatever is, like, in front of you right now. Thank <laughs> you.